Hello and welcome to the fourth requirement of PCI DSS-4, the latest version that's been released now. This is not going to be a very long video because there's not been a lot of changes in requirement four. And in case you've not seen the first three videos, I really request you to uh, view the first three videos, requirement one, two, and three of the series. And today we'll be taking up requirement number four, the changes which is there from version 3.2.1 to 4.0. And before we head out to that, I really encourage you to click on the subscribe button. I'm sure you subscribe, but if not, this is the right time for it. Click on the subscribe button, click on the bell icon so you get notified. We put up new content very, very frequently. Do drop in your comments, whether it is positive, negative, whatever, give your feedback. We'd love to take it up and learn as to how we can improve and do better. All right, so moving right ahead into requirement number four of summary of changes from version 3.2.1 to 4.0. Well, you see in requirement four for version, the requirement was called as encrypt transmission of cardholder data across open public networks. This has now been updated to protect cardholder data with strong cryptography during transmission over open public networks. There has been a focus more on cryptography at this just from the get go, right? Just on the word go. So in the earlier version 3.2.1, requirement 4.1 highlights the need for strong cryptography and security protocols to safeguard sensitive cardholder data during transmission over public networks. Keeping in mind that only trusted keys and certificates are accepted, the protocol in use only supports secure versions or configurations and strength and encryption strength is appropriate for the encryption methodology in use. The outdated versions like SSL and TLS version 1.1 and all are really not acceptable. In PCI DSS 3.2.1, uh, requirement number 4.1.1, it talks about identifying of all the wireless networks transmitting cardholder data or connected to the cardholder data environment and verifying whether the industry best practices are used for implementing strong encryption of for authentication and transmission of card data. Now, this requirement also talks about verifying whether weak encryption, such as, you know, what I mentioned earlier, that is SSL or even WEP, is not used as a security control for authentication or transmission. Even if you're using that, that is really not admissible anymore. Now, PCADSS version 4, requirement 4.1 also talks about processes and mechanisms of protecting cardholder data with strong cryptography during transmission over open public networks. It also specifies the need to define, document, update, and also notify all affected parties about updates in the policies, procedures, and processes. The latest version of PCI DSS 4.0 has, has also introduced a new requirement which is a requirement 4.1.2. Now, this is a new requirement, also called as an evolving requirement, which is regarding the roles and responsibilities of personnel for performing activities in requirement 4. Now, this particular requirement, particular control, that is, the roles and responsibilities of personnel in any requirement, this is there in all the requirements. Now, so this is effective immediately, all right? Moving on to requirement 4.2 of PCI DSS 4. It covers basically the same requirement as it was earlier in PCI DSS 3.2.1. But requirement 4.2 has highlighted the need for PAN details to be rendered unreadable or secured with strong cryptography whenever it is sent via end user messaging technologies. Now, in my opinion, it is even if it is encrypting, it looks bad for your company. If you're sending card data using end user messaging technologies like say Microsoft Teams or Slack or hope not WhatsApp types, it doesn't look good for you. Figure out something better for sending something as sensitive as card data. But again, that sending is not banned, but if you're sending it, it has to be via uh, strong cryptography to be used. There is an additional requirement, 4.2.1, which highlights the need to confirm that certificates used for PAN transmissions over public networks are valid and not expired or revoked. In a closed network, basically, this was not being checked earlier. But now with this new standard, this is required to be checked whether those certificates are actually valid and not expired or revoked. But again, this is a new requirement seen as a best, best practice until 31st of March, 2025, when all these requirements become a mandate. 
Now, PCI DSS 4.0 has also introduced a new requirement, 4.2.1.1. Now, this speaks about an inventory of all the trusted keys and certificates to protect PAN during transmission. Now, again, this is not uh, this is a best practice until March 31st, 2025. Now, similar to what is covered in requirement 4.2 and requirement 4.3 in PCI DSS 3.2.1. PCI 4 requirement 4.2.1.2 talks about examining system configuration to verify that wireless networks transmitting PAN or connected to the card data environment uses industry best practices to implement strong cryptography for authentication and transmission. What's being said is that, in short, if I make this simple, it's speaking about hardening your wireless configuration, especially from the authentication and transmission, as per industry best practices. So finally, PCI DSS 4, that is requirement 4.2, talks about examining documented policies and procedures to verify that the processes are defined to secure PAN with strong cryptography whenever sent over end user messaging technologies. So it also requires examining of system configuration and vendor documentation to verify that PAN is secured with strong cryptography whenever it is sent via end user messaging technologies. So new changes or changes to version four, as you can see, these are the description of changes for version four. This version uh, that is requirement 4.1.2, requirement 4.2.1 and 4.2.1.1, right? Most of it is right, evolving requirements, evolving requirements and evolving requirements, best practice until 31st March 2025. But uh, 4.1.2, remember the new requirement for roles and responsibilities is immediate. It cannot be deferred for 31st of March 2025. So with this, we end requirement four because there's, as I said, nothing much to do. Changes in requirement four, whatever is there is of course important. So hope this, I really hope this video was useful for you and clears all your doubts with regards to requirement four. We'll shortly be releasing the videos of five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Do wait up for that for requirement five, which should be released in a week or so. So stay tuned for that. Should you have any queries, do drop us a line on ask us at vistainfosic.com and we'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you again and have a wonderful day ahead. Bye-bye.